I have a 40 watt solder gun with a thin tip. I recommend a 40 watt. Here's some solder I bought at Radio Shack. It's thin, the thin solder right there. You, there's two ways to desolder, desoldering wire, and you can use a plunger, solder sucker, just like that. All right, it's pretty easy stuff. So practice makes perfect. You know, if you want to get good at soldering, this is the way to do it, practice. What you want to do is heat it up. You want to heat up the, the pin with the board right there until it liquefies. Not too long because you destroy the board. And then go ahead and in an angle, hit the button, and it unsolders it right there. And then when you're done, when you're done, you just go ahead and push down right here. And it pushes all the old solder out. I'm going to show you uh, just a couple times right here. This is old board, so I don't have to worry about messing it up. Heat it up, hit the solder. That's pretty much it. Do it again. Let it liquefy. Just like that. Show you again. Just like that. All right, now let's go take a look. So I use both because the reason why I use both is I unsolder using the plunger first and then I clean it up with the wick a soldering braid desoldering braid just like that and you want to heat up the braid and push down on the board so it soaks it out and this is the desoldering wire let's try it again right here let it put a little pressure right there push down on the solder wire and then slide it out just a hair You've been sliding it and let it soak into the wire. I mean, this is not exactly the best solder wire. There's better stuff out there. You know, people use speaker wire and flux. That's pretty common. But see, it, this doesn't work for me. It does. It takes off the solder, yes, but not enough to actually make a difference. So I don't. I like to use this as a follow-up after I use the plunger. So it looks like the solder plunger won. When you pull it out, let's see how long it takes. So pull the right leg. Well, to you it's left, I guess. And then pull the left leg. And then pull the right leg. And then it will come out. So that's, that's fairly quick. But you may damage the board by doing that just because the trace is attached and so it's not really recommended to do it that way so let's do it the other way and let's compare let's take out that one with the solder plunger okay so we heat it up once you heat it up that's one solder plunger is only like 10 bucks too Oops, actually I didn't heat it up. Oh, it just fell right out. I'm out. Solder plunger wins again. That just fell right out. And to clean it out, if it gets too full, you just untwist it. Right here. Just like that. Ooh, shit. Oops. So you clean it out that way, but you don't want to clean it out on the board. This board's bad, by the way, so I'm just using it as a test board. Now for soldering, here's a tip for soldering. And then I tin it just like that. So it preps it. So now when I want to solder something, I basically apply the heat right there. And then on the other end, I just let it soak in. See, the key is practice. You want to actually heat up the pin and the bottom of the where the board meets the pin. Just like that. Okay? 
liquefies and then go ahead and just dab just a little bit. You don't want to glob it in and then if you glob it in it's going to make a mess and may go um, over spill into other traces and pins and short everything out. And I'll go ahead and show you one more time. And see how this is loose? Sometimes the heat causes the, the screws to get loose so you just want to retighten that. And these tips are interchangeable interchangeable. I'll go show you one more time. Heat up the pin, let it liquefy. Once you heat it up on the other side, just dab it a little bit, let it soak in just like that. Hope this helps.